Welcome to Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz and we are joined today by Marika Coleman. She is a member of the Alabama House of Representatives, yes. a professor herself. Yes. And so I want to speak with you about education. Sure. Start with K-12 education. Yes. And the focus on what's known as Common Core. Yes. National standards set, not by the federal government, as I understand it, but by governors who got together. Common Core was adopted in Alabama, but there's some controversy surrounding right. it. There's what can you tell us about Common so Core? So much movement in Alabama mm -hmm. to get rid of Common Core. I don't understand it. Um, our young people today are going to have to compete not just with other kids in Alabama, right. not just other kids in the southeast or the country, but in this global society. So we need some kind of standard where they can compete. So if there is a move to California, if there is a right. move to Arizona or New York, that they have the same standards from state to state so they can academically achieve. So are you hearing in your district, which is Birmingham centric, yes. concerns, complaints, confusion about Common Core? I don't get the phone calls about uh, Common Core because really I think you know, we're, we're doing our job in the Jefferson County, Birmingham right. area of letting our parents know how important it is for these kids to be able to compete on a global What's stage. What's interesting though, aside from the debate over Common Core, mm -hmm. it really is a new way of educating. Sure. You're taking students and asking them to dig deep. Mm -hmm. It's fewer subjects, but dig a little deeper. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about, I have a fifth grader and a, sem and a seventh grader, for example. So they're kind of in that middle range. Right. And so new way of learning. So, you know, the high school students, now nah, they're done. You know, Common Core yeah. is coming, you know, they, they, they've passed that. The K-1-2, they're okay. You know, they, they'll adjust, but it's that middle range. It is. Where it's a little tricky. Yes. So as a legislator and as an educator, what would you tell parents who are just struggling to have their children adapt to the new ways? Well, they're, they're gonna have to come up with the times. Okay. If you want your young people, you want your children to be, to be able to compete with the rest of the world. So right. again, I'll keep saying it, we're in a global society right. now with everything that's going on with technology. You wanna make sure that our children have a fair shot. And education is the great equalizer. You know, I have kids in public school as well, mm -hmm. and my daughter took this class called Theory of Knowledge. Mm. And this class doesn't tell you just to, to think outside of the box. It says to kick that box away. Wow. So her thought process, I can have a conversation with her about all kinds of world issues that I could have never had at sure. 16 or 17 year old, years old because they're really telling them to think outside of their, right. their, their monolithic you know, communities and their families, but thinking about how things impact the world Now, in the current session, there have been a few bills popping around on Common Core. Right. One is looking at Alabama not kicking Common Core to the curb, but preventing expansion to other subjects. Another one's looking to allow an opt-out for local school boards. What do you make of those bills? I, you know, again, some of that I think has more to do with politics mm -hmm. and less to do with people think actually what is best right. for young people. What is wrong with expanding and learning about new things so you can make an intelligent decisions about literature, right. about religion, about all kinds of issue? You know, having that overarching teaching the whole child makes a better child. As we speak today, the bills aren't moving. They're not. Which some may find surprising. Like right. you said, this is Alabama. Right. We've had some major issues around right. our budgets this year, right. some other fights, and that's just what happens. We only have 30 legislative days, which ends up being about, you know, three right. months, right. but two days out of the week. So other issues have just gotten in front of that particular issue. But do you think this issue is now behind Alabama? Oh, no. Do you think <laughs> oh, no. Really? I I think that every session um, somebody will introduce a bill. I've been here 13 years now. Um, you know, members that are no longer serve have introduced bills in the past uh, trying to get rid of Common Core. So I don't think it's going away. But do you think that as time marches on, yes. as Common Core becomes more entrenched, that the vitriol against it may yeah. subside? Well, that's my hope. Um, I'm extremely optimistic, mm -hmm. and I always believe that uh, with ex education and exposure, um, you can change someone's thought mm -hmm. process once they see another way. So we've got to do our job as legislators, as, as educators, to really explain to the larger public the importance of Common Core and the importance of these kids competing at that global stage. I want to talk about one piece of legislation that did make it through, and that deals with charters. Yes. It's a movement that has become very popular, not just here in Alabama, but throughout the nation. Right. And Even the president, who's a right. Democrat, supports yes. charters. Sure. And, yeah, and it's interesting. Um, 
it kind of crosses racial lines, it crosses political lines. One of the biggest supporters in Alabama is the Black Alliance for yes. Educational Options. Yes, gotten a lot of pressure from, right. from Bayo. <laughs> Who, by the way, supports Common Core. They do. <laughs> so it's, it's kind crazy, of- Crazy, isn't it? It is. <laughs> so what's your sense of the charter school movement? I think really with Bayo, and I'll, I'll right. stick there for a minute. Please. Um, again, I represent an urban area, and right. when you see um, some aspects of public education mm -hmm. not working for everybody. Okay, right. People do want some choices, right. and so I'm an advocate for choice. Sure. Um, I just um, have had, a, and I'm a policy please, person, please. I've had an opportunity to do my own research on right. charter schools, and they're not the wind all be all. Right. There are some places where they are absolutely amazing, and there are other places where the young people cannot even compete where they, right. they graduate and they find out that the school was not accredited, they can't go to a college. Mm. So I'm not one that believes that we should, you know, kind of throw right. the baby away with the bathwater when it comes to charters. As if though the legislation that did pass that it's going mm -hmm. too far? Because, you know, one could argue if you look at it, it allows conversions yes. of existing schools, but it also allows a small number of startups. Yeah, and I that's the and I will tell you I was a part of the team Please. that was fighting to limit the numbers. Okay. I really wish we would have just kind of done one to pilot it. Um, I see. Was able to get a, an amendment on the bill also to protect public school teachers who now go into the conversion school I to see. make sure that their salary is protected. Right, the other issue that place. really bothered me mm -hmm. was the lack of accountability for qualified teachers. That's my major thing. Mm -hmm. um, the when union the amendment, regulations don't apply They do to not charters. apply to the mm -hmm. charters. Some think that that's wonderful. A scientist can come in and teach science. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm in higher education. Right. Um, even me, at this level, I might not be equipped to teach a fifth grader social right. studies. Oh, I although know. I, I couldn't teach, teach fifth grade math. There's another <laughs> I whole, couldn't teach fifth there's grade a math. whole right. other skill set right. that is required. So I had real issue with you know the lack of accountability for the qualified teachers. Do you teachers. think the fact that the students must still take the standardized tests yes, makes a is difference? That, is, is that helpful? Yeah, I that's mean, helpful. That is, again, so then we're able to kind of monitor to see if indeed uh, the mm -hmm. charters are working. In addition to the charter, you know, we passed or they passed mm -hmm. the Accountability Act that allows right. people to kind of move their kids to um, school, failing schools and use the, the um, a scholarships. It's, it, it, oh, we haven't called it a voucher, but okay. it's very similar to a voucher. But, so let's go there. So again, we want to make sure this year there was a new bill that was passed to make sure that we're monitoring that process. But let's do talk about can we call them vouchers just for our that's conversation? That's what they are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a whole different step. Yeah. I mean, that's taking public dollars that's exactly and what it is. giving it to private schools. Yes. It's a small program in yeah. Alabama. Yeah, um, so, very, but a lot of money was put into the sure. program, but a small number of students have actually um, benefited. What we want to know, you know, I was on the microphone right. last week asking the question, how many students that are actually benefiting from the scholarship or voucher program mm -hmm. actually came from a failing school? I want to know now, after being in the new school with right. the voucher or with the scholarship, have those test scores actually risen? Her name is Barika Coleman. She is a member of the Alabama State House of Representatives. My name is Brad Pomerantz. It's Charter Local Edition.